Here's a look at the finished unit. We're going for something that looks great on the table, but isn't going to stand up to close scrutiny. Super counterintuitively, I primed these all uh, white. I don't know what I was thinking there, but it ended up working out okay. I would say you could start out with a black primer, and that's what I'll be doing for future Night Haunt units. So the upper part of their cloaks, to start off, I gave them a base coat of Stegodon Green. This is obviously going to look a little darker if you go over a black primer coat. Um, but regardless, uh, even with the white, I put it on thick enough, uh, potentially in a couple coats, letting it dry as I was airbrushing, uh, so that it was quite dark anyway. And um, I should mention, I'm painting all 20, so like in assembly line process, I do one step across all 20 of them, and then come back and do the next step, etc. And you should do the same. So here you can see I've sprayed them all with that first color, and it looks quite dark. And we're going to follow that up with Sotec Green in a light airbrushed layer being pretty imprecise. I'm just sort of hitting the high points of the backs of their heads and their shoulders, etc. Um, whatever the highest point of the model is based on the pose. Seems weird that I'm not using the Night Haunt paint, the technical paint that GW came out with to do these. I'm actually using, as I mentioned, P3 Eldritch, which is a new color. Looks really, really cool. Um, and I first got the idea from watching Gorilla Miniature Games, uh, Ash Barker. This is how he did his. And it's an airbrush of this color sort of shooting upward at the model from beneath so that you're sort of it kind of gives it a, a glow from the inside so to speak and make sure you get it on those inner parts of the cloak because this is a key step in achieving that ethereal look I've, i'm showing you um a couple probably two or three examples of different poses and how i've sprayed it on just so you can see how it goes on and how it's hitting the different parts of the sculpt I also stole the idea of using Goss Blaster Green Edge Paint to highlight the um, Eldritch. My pot, I think, was a little older, and so the paint was... I mean, you're supposed to be able to take it right out of this pot and use it as an edge paint from what I can tell based on how they market this, but it was a little thick and a little older, so I, I think I watered it down, but ultimately wasn't having a great time using it, just to be honest. Next I airbrush the ends of the ethereal parts of the cloth with Ulthuan Grey. Um, you could also, if you're using a hand brush, you could also dry brush this color on. Sorry, I didn't get the greatest camera angle when I recorded this particular step. Now to darken the initial steps, which were the Stegodon Green and the Sotec Green, I go back over that cloak part with um, Nuln Oil straight from the pot. I mean, you can thin it if you want, but I didn't bother because I'm doing such a large unit here. And what I'm doing, you can kind of tell, is I go over into the green part a bit so that it starts to kind of blend into black and not just be a sharp um, break in the black between the cloth and the ethereal part. So that's the worst explanation, but yeah, I'm trying to sort of feather that black wash up from the green area in and over and covering the whole um, cloak. When that step has completely dried, I do a light dry brush of Temple Guard Blue, which gives it a cool, nice blue turquoise-ish highlight. And, um, you know, it still looks black, but has um, a little more visual interest to it. Um, I had mine pre-mixed for airbrushing, which is not what you want for dry brushing. So what you would want to do is get, in fact, I went out and bought a, a fresh bottle after this um, and take it right from the bottle and dry brush it on. And, you know, go back over and try and get rid of those sort of dry brushy looking spots if you get them. Here we're getting into the basic steps. As always, this time I use Mornfang Brown to paint the hafts of all the weapons that have them. So maces and axes and things. And... 
you know, when it comes to steps like this, and I probably will end up repeating myself in other videos, use whatever brown you want. You could paint them black, you could paint them really any color. It's just the handle of the weapon. Similarly, when it comes to the metallics, in my case, I'm using a gunmetal gray by Vallejo um, and painting, you know, these, these metallic airbrush colors are really nice to paint with pretty much out of the bottle because they're pre-thinned for airbrushing and they paint on really nicely. But again, you could use any sort of darker metallic color you want. Lead Belcher is, is often a go-to for most people. It would work fine. Next, I took a older bottle of Mithril Silver, grab whatever silver you like, maybe it's Runefang Steel, for example. And what we're doing is creating um, an under highlight for some of the weathering we're going to apply. And I don't want a nice, smooth, crisp, you know, blade. What I'm doing instead is some rough dry brushing um, and, you know, st even stippling in some spots. because so I want to create some bright points on the, on the metal and not have it look sort of pristine. Um, I want it to um, to look like there's bits of metal coming through the weathering and that's what that silver does for you. Partly I do this because I don't want to have something that's just like a solid brown mass of rust which is sometimes what you see with these weapons. Another super basic step is to paint the gravestones and rocks and things on the base. I, I'm using Mechanicus Standard Brown, you, uh, brown, Mechanicus Standard Gray and you can use whatever medium gray you have it will work just fine go for something a little darker as this is the base color typhus corrosion one of my favorite technical paints i do use this before the rust some people use it after the rust your mileage may vary so to speak um, and i don't like to brush it on i like to stipple it on i like to stipple this on and i like to stipple rise of rust on you'll see that later and this is to sort of lay the foundation of our corrosion and wear on the weapons and armor and things like that and the balls and chains and again i'm stippling it because i want it to look irregular i want it to look more organic and not sort of brush it on in this nice layer I do really dig this new Hex Wraith Flame technical paint from GW and I use it pretty much the way they describe it where I paint it over, I think I painted these flames um, with Ulthuan Grey rather than white and just brush that stuff on, let it dry. Very optional step here, I take Ethonian Etho Camo Shade and I wash the initial dark grey of the um, tombstones with this because I'm going for like a greenish old looking wash with it um, and to bring out the details but not just with like a basic black. While that wash is drying we'll come back with the riser rust like I said I do tend to stipple it on and I stipple that on to the you know the weapons the ball and chain any armor or metallic areas you have and I don't sort of you know coat the whole weapon with it I try to go for where you might see rust accumulate between the blade and the handle or at the base of the ball and chain, things like that. It really doesn't make sense because they don't stand perfectly still and let the water run down, but I don't necessarily want to go for like rust from head to toe. Come back in with some Nuln oil just to bring out some of the detail in the, specifically in the chain where the links start to look a little more solid depending on how you've applied your metallics. This helps bring back uh, that sense that each link is individual. Um, very, again, optional step. I think you could get away without it. And I'm not using gloss because I don't mind if it looks very tarnished and, and less silvery. Here's a very small step. Iron Rack Skin is a really good color, it seems, for candle wax. So I painted the candles with that. I had previously painted the, um, you know, the stocks on this one model with um, Mornfang Brown, and now I'm dry brushing it with Zandri Dust just to bring out. It's a pretty shallow uh, bit of texturing on this thing, so I had to go pretty light in the dry brush. And I don't know, you could paint this just about any way you want. But this is how I went about it. 
Toward the end, I did find that I had covered up too much of the green with the Ulthuan and gotten some splatter and stuff, so I decided to go and smooth that out by airbrushing back on some Eldritch. Um, I think maybe I actually overcorrected and put too much green back on, and so it's going to be, with the future Night Haunts, finding that balance is going to be key. Very basic step, now that the Ethonian Camel Shade is dried on the gravestones, I go back in and dry brush it with Dawnstone. That'll dry very quickly and my final dry brush on the edges is with Administratum Grey, just to bring out that sharp detail and add some really nice bright highlights. Bases are done with Vallejo Paste Dark Earth and once that's dry, dry brush with these two colors. And I thought I was done, but I wasn't because I forgot some of the weapon handles and things. So I used this, um, I want to say necrotic gold. It's almost like a death, you know, undead gold. It's kind of a greenish tinge. Uh, looks really nice. I actually really like it for these guys. Um, if you don't have it, I mean, any gold, any gold is fine. Maybe something like um, auric gold from uh, GW. Here's a closer look at the finished unit. I apologize it's not a rotating video this time. There's just so darn many of them. It was really tricky to get a nice uh, shot of that so hopefully you can get a sense for how these are going to look when they're done. Uh, you can see I've applied some tufts to the bases. You can apply whatever kind of tufts you want. You can leave them off, anything. It, the basing is really up to you. Last thing I'll add is go on the tips of the flames and do a little bit of Lamenter's Yellow Glaze. Um, they do that in the, the uh, Warhammer TV videos. It looks really nice. And that's it for this unit. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and consider following me on social media for work in progress shots and idea of what kind of videos are coming up. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.